amazing that you, after Aspre, you continue to carry out research in the field of preeclampsia. Perhaps you can tell us your latest adventure, because then we can really understand the direction that we should be heading for the future. So it took us 20 years, work that actually you were very actively involved in leading in developing a model for first trimester prediction of preeclampsia. And that model essentially was based on a combination of maternal factors, uterine artery doppler, mean arterial pressure, and placental growth factor, with a much lesser effect from PABE. We looked for hundreds of other biomarkers, and none was found to be effective. Research continues to see whether it can improve the prediction with new biomarkers, and we will continue to do that, and other groups will be doing so indefinitely. Why? Well, because with first trimester prediction, you can identify about 90% of the women that will develop preeclampsia before 32 weeks, about 75 that develop preeclampsia before 37 weeks, and only about 40% of those that develop term preeclampsia. So still, we need to improve the first trimester prediction of preterm preeclampsia, and now we need to focus on the development of term preeclampsia. That uh, can be achieved by screening at around 36 weeks by a combination of bacterial factors, mean arterial pressure, placental growth factor, and FLIT. What do we do? Well, we carried out a major study uh, to identify the high risk group involving 30,000 women. And then we gave pravastatin versus placebo, and we failed to reduce the incidence of preeclampsia. Our research now is focused on stratification of risk at 36 weeks and stratification of elective timing of delivery. If you have an extremely high risk, aim for delivery at 37 weeks, lesser risk, 38, 39, 40, 41 weeks. And we expect that in doing so, we will prevent the development of preeclampsia, gestational hypertension, fetal growth restriction, fetal distress in labor. That hopefully um, will be completed in the next uh, couple of years. Another important emphasis of research from my perspective is to address this issue of calcium deficient individuals within a non-calcium deficient uh, country. Uh, and we are trying to find ways of identifying such groups. And if we do, then again, carry out prospective major studies. So these are the three areas of research. Improve first semester prediction, identify women that are calcium deficient, and time delivery to prevent term preclamps. And these are all my secrets. Um, I have a tricky question for you, actually, and, and there seems to be a move to use PAPE instead of POGF for first trimester screening of preterm preeclampsia. I mean, what do you think about that? I think that at the back of screening for Down syndrome, in some countries where PAPE is being used, it is attractive to suggest that let's not use PLGF because it's an extra expense. Actually, the extra expense translates to about two to three uh, dollars or euros per patient. If we accept that argument of cost, fair enough. But what is an absolute fact is that PABE is a very weak predictor of preeclampsia whereas PLGF is a very good predictor of preeclampsia. And in major studies that we have carried out, uh, we have recently reported uh, that in a head-on comparison, PLGF is much, much better than PAPE. Well, in our, in our cohort, although we haven't demonstrated a, a superior performance by PLGF in comparison to PAPE, but certainly, uh, by using PLGF instead of PAPE, we are able to detect, uh, we are able to identify three uh, more additional pregnancies, which subsequently developed preterm preeclampsia out of 37 
preterm preeclampsia. And in my opinion, I, I don't think we can just focus on the overall screening performance. But if I tell these three women that they should have been detected by the use of POGF and then they were missed, then I think it would have a huge impact on, 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 on an individual level. So I think this is at the moment my argument that we should provide the best test available. And that is with PO, POGF as part of the combined test. Leona, that's exactly the point that you illustrated there. If you carry out very, very small studies and you do show a benefit, it doesn't reach statistical significance because the sample size was more. We often make that mistake in our thinking that just because something has not reached significance, statistical significance, by definition, the two events are the same. Well, that is very, very wrong. In the vast majority of cases where you have differences between two biomarkers, lack of significance is a mere reflection of the inadequate study that you have carried out rather than true uh, lack of difference between uh, the two biomarkers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm very privileged that in, in, in my setting, I'm able to, to really advocate the use of POGF. And, and I truly believe that, uh, you know, the, the measurement of POGF is far superior than PAP-A. And when I look at the report, I really break down the individual bar markers when I do the counseling. And when I see a case with very low POGF, I immediately get very worried because certainly a POGF is a more specific marker for placental health than PAPE. And then I think through, through our research, we really, um, you know, have made a major milestone in, in improving preeclampsia screening. There's, a, there's something else, Leona. I think that ideologically, it is somehow wrong to say we are screening for Downs and that the back of screening for Downs will screen for another condition that has nothing to do with Downs. If I take England, for example, it's a very high proportion of the population that does not want to have screening for Downs. So what shall we do with those women? Ignore them uh, for their risk of reclamps, be punish them because they don't like to have screening for Downs. There are two different conditions and we must see them as two different conditions and identify the best possible way of identifying these groups independently from each other. So I don't buy the argument that we are doing PABE anyway, forget those that don't want to have screening and we offer the ones that have PABE uh, blood pressure measurements in uterine and, and give them a risk for preeclampsia.